Hey everyone, welcome to another episode from Ampro Engineering. I've got a little neat card to review today, and it's new in box, so that's different. This is a Tyco Outlaw with Power Boost Engine. I never had one as a kid, but I picked this up on eBay for very, very little, and it came with a box, and many of you watching this channel know I'm not a new in box kind of person, but it came fairly inexpensive, so I figured, eh, what the heck, let's uh, let's take a look at it. So this was brand new in 393, if you can see that right there, this was $39. Kind of odd to see uh, prices on some of these cars. Now remember, $39.93 was not $39 today. So let's open this up. Actually, before we do that, let's take a look at the box. I always loved Tycho's artwork. Like Tamiya, the artwork on some of these Tycho boxes was awesome. As I recall, now it's been quite some time, but I do remember going to the toy store when I was little, and the Tycho boxes really stood out over a lot of the other manufacturers, over even Nico boxes, simply because they were so well laid out. And, oh, look at look what we have here. Okay, so we've got the black version, which is the 27 band. Then you've got your fast tracks. There's a couple of these over here. The Eliminator basically took the place of the Bandit with a more, well, 90s body and uh, and so on. Let's open this thing up, which I don't think would be very hard. So the seller did mention it was mint in in, uh, in mint in box and oops I've fallen out already mint in box but I have to admit that he also mentioned that there was a flaw which is one of the reasons why I got it very very cheaply oh look at the, it even came with little cones the reason I got this at a very very low price was because the seller said it was broken uh, he didn't go into detail but I, I don't know well let's let's take a look at it this thing has definitely either barely seen any use or maybe only on carpet the belly on this thing is absolutely new there is a missing decal right here and i'm seeing some scuffing on the roof that may very well be from a loose engine flopping around now they sold this exact same truck as the mini bandit they also sold a micro bandit this one here really had the proportions of the Tyco bandits so cosmetically it's very very nice the chrome is well the chrome is excellent on this thing uh, we do not have a differential but we do have a slightly articulated rear axle and we have rear suspension and these shocks although not very much travel they are pretty soft actually and oftentimes some of these Toy grade manufacturers will put overly hard shocks. Uh, the tires feel incredibly hard. That may be a result of age. I don't think it is. I believe these tires to be solid. But overall, it's, it's a very, very good looking model of a Nissan D21 pickup. The gimmick here is that the truck runs on four AA batteries. However, whereas many Tycos of the time, or, or even Nikos and other uh, brands, had a turbo function on the remote, this one does not. It just has forward and backward and left and right. Like this remote's absolutely adorable. You can tell it's designed for wee hands. This engine here is your turbo function. Now, the first thing to note is that it is very heavy. Um, this feels like these are cast aluminum or something. I can't, there's not a chance. Uh, they feel very cold, but that could be just a result of the of the chrome plating. This piece here feels exceedingly solid. On the bottom, you can see that there's room for two double A's. So when installed, you're going from four double A batteries to six double A batteries, and uh, hence your power boost engine. In terms of size, this is. I would say a bit on the smaller side. Again, the target audience here is a smaller child, probably between the ages of, I don't know, five and eight, maybe even a little bit older. So for some comparison, the Tyco Bandit is 1 16th scale, and this is significantly smaller still. Uh, we can definitely see a, a considerable size difference. Does that make this 1 18th? Does it make it 1 20th? Well, this is a Nissan D21, and it's a very common pickup truck in California still, so I know how big this is. This 
Mustang 2 is 1 18th scale. And again, I have friends that have these cars. I know how big that is. They should be fairly close to being the same width. The Mustang 2 is actually a little bit wider. And uh, although it is in fact wider in this comparison, it's way too wide. I'm gonna have to say this is about 1 19th, 1 20th scale, uh, right around there. In terms of ground clearance, there really isn't too much. And if you did try and take this off-road, it wouldn't do well. Again, there's no front suspension. The rear suspension is minimal at best. So this is more of one of those toys designed for flat ground or, you know, driveways, sidewalks, smooth streets. Speaking of smooth streets, let's take this out to the parking lot and see how it goes. Daddy, yes, you can. <laughs> there you go. Eight. I almost said it's too high and fast. I'll try it one more time. Well, I was not expecting that at all. I don't think I mentioned this, but I think we should here. I was driving this car on freshly charged Enelu batteries. Now these are, these are nickel metal hydride. Yeah, these are nickel metal hydride. Now NIM batteries have slightly less lower than a NICAD, but they're about the same. So we can expect the same performance roughly with a NICAD battery. Now the box very clearly states that alkaline or nickel cadmium batteries can be used. Here's the thing, these are roughly 1.15 to 1.2 volts a cell. Alkaline batteries 1.5 volts per cell. This means with six batteries, this car is 7.2 volts. With six alkaline batteries, we are talking about nine volts. So that is almost two volts more. This thing would have been flying, and I would say undrivable with alkaline batteries. And with that said, it is remarkably fast for what it is. In fact, it's remarkably fast 
in comparison to a lot of cars. In fact, I bet that this truck is faster than a stock grasshopper. Remember, the grasshopper is running the same, 7.2 volts. The standard grasshopper has the 380 motor, so this is not a fast car. It weighs much, much more than this. So in terms of power to weight, the Outlaw has much better odds than the Grasshopper. In fact, one day we're going to have to compare a lot of these more consumer-targeted. There, that's good. I like that. Consumer-targeted RC cars. Those of you who have seen my channel, I cannot stand toy grade. These are all toys. So I think maybe more consumer-targeted maybe is a little bit better. We'll figure that out later. Nevertheless, this thing is seriously quick, even for a much larger car. The question, of course, remains, do you want it? Well, if you want one and you are a collector, you probably want it complete. It does come with these five cones, which I suspect are very hard to find, and that radio. But as a collector, the only time you're going to desperately want one of these is if you had one as a kid. Otherwise, I really don't see much value in these for someone into collecting RC cars. If you are looking at something like this, then the Tyco Bandit's the car to get. I would go right past the Outlaw. If you did have one as a kid, go buy one. That's all I can say. Right now, they're fairly inexpensive, but there weren't that many made, so you're going to see the price go up in these. I wouldn't say skyrocket, but you are going to see the price go up for nicer ones. For those of you who want to play with it, again, it's not particularly good for an adult. In fact, although I had a great time driving it, what I was perpetually worried about because of its condition is flipping it over. So although in high gear with the four double A's, and especially in high gear with the six double A's, this thing was a ball to drive, but again, I was worried the whole time. And therefore, as a driver, I also wouldn't recommend it. Again, there's a lot of different thoughts on the matter, but just keeping things very cut and dry, I don't think this is a particularly good car for the collector or for somebody who wants to play especially for a youngster today. You're gonna to spend between 60 and $80 for a pretty nice one. And for that amount of outlay, you can buy a ton of much, much better modern RC cars that a, a youngster is gonna prefer more than this. Still, it is absolutely a, a beautiful car. The molding's great, the look is awesome. So I'm sold, I love the thing. And if you do too, you should get your hands on one while you can. Well, again, everyone, thank you all so much for watching. We've had a lot of updates recently, and I've got a ton of videos all chalked up, ready to go. So subscribe if you've liked this content and you like kind of the weird stuff we go over on this channel, and we will see you very soon. And thanks again for watching.